Good evening, fellow exiles. If you've been watching my channel for a while now, or if you want to go back and look, I've been doing a lot of stuff where I've been trying to reorganize and get rid of a lot of stuff in my life. And I was inspired by a recent video series that Wrangler Star did on his channel where he put together an all-American made thousand piece or thousand dollar ish, he went a little over budget, toolkit. So like a mechanics toolkit. Now I already did a homeowner's toolkit with like hammers and saws and screwdrivers. So I decided to organize better all my mechanics tools and I put them in this bag here. It's an 18 inch Menards brand was that Master Force cheap tool bag. Uh, if this one wears out, I'll replace it with a better one. Now my homeowner's tool bag is a open top so I can just reach in and out. I'll put a link in the vid in the description. I thought about doing that for this kind of bag, but this will be riding around in the back of my SUV uh, and stuff like that. So I don't think an open top tool bag would work for this. I wanted one with a zipper. We'll see how well I like it. And Wrangler Store's video, he did all American made tools. And by doing so, he blew through his thousand dollar budget and had less tools than I have in it. Now, my tools aren't quite as good quality, but I've worked in enough factories to realize that American made tools are not like they used to be. Most of the people I work with in factories and most of the management even, and even the people who work in quality are like, whatever, I don't care. As long as we don't get complaints by the customer, it's good enough. So what I try to do is buy the best quality tools and other stuff that I can for the money I spend. That way I can be more responsible with my money and possibly buy more tools or stuff like that. So let's start out with the first thing I grabbed out of here are uh, wrenches. Now I had a set of wrenches. I, ha I have plenty of wrenches. But I've been wanting to get these ratcheting wrenches for a while. So I went ahead and spent the money on the on ratcheting wrenches. Now I tried to cheap out and buy wrenches that were slightly cheaper than these gear wrench brand ones. And they turned out to be like the ratcheting was pretty good. The the fit was fine, but the etching wasn't there at all. It was just screen printed. I did a short, uh, again, link in the description for that short on the difference of these. Now these come are, uh, I have sizes a quarter to three quarters in standard or SAE or however, you, whatever you want to call them. And six to 18 in metric. And right now they're just loosely thrown in there. Uh, I want to get some special like nice bungees to hold these together in groups. That'll help keep them from rattling. And I'll be able to just pull out the wrenches, find them better. Keep them rattling around. Might go with a tool roll for them. The problem with the tool roll is I've tried that before. You can't spread it out anywhere while you're on top of the engine while you're working on it. So that you end up just pulling all the tools out of it and throwing the tool roll on the ground. It didn't work well for me. I know it works well for some people, and that's great if it does. I wish I could use it. All right. And like I said, I've been putting together lost tools and trying to be more organized. So these are Tecton brand sockets. They're really good. As I do some more cleaning, I bet you I have most of these laying around. Maybe not the Tecton ones, but I have, I can replace all the missing ones. And this is a magnetic tool holder. It works really good. You can just see this, you can set on the engine next to where you're working. Unlike the wrench tool roll. And you can just reach over and grab what you need. They come off pretty easy. Hopefully they don't bounce around in the bag and fall off. If they do, I might have to switch to like one of these old school tool rails. And uh, these are the church's tools. I'm borrowing their work area to do this video because I don't have a, it's dark and I don't have any lights put in my shed yet. So those are the standard ones. These are the metric. Now I'll just pull out the tools as I go. Uh, some nice, what are these, 11 inch zip ties. Zip ties are great to have for a lot of temporary repairs 
or holding back wires. Large straight blade screwdriver. I need to put in a smaller screwdriver, straight blade screwdriver as well. But these also make good like pry bars and stuff like that. Uh, number two Phillips. Always handy. I got a roll of electrical tape. I also need to throw in a roll of uh, repair tape for doing uh, like repairing hoses and stuff like that. And a roll of duct tape. But as the bag gets more organized, I'll do that. And these should have opened before the video. I just bought these. They are Allen Rich uh, sockets. I've owned these before, or I've never owned a set of Allen Wrench sockets. And these are Torx, by the way. Probably won't need these. I've only needed Torx once. But I, I've never owned these, and I've always just borrowed my dad's when I needed them. And I'm trying to get away from doing that with uh, tools because it's easier not to worry about returning them or going to get them. Or if my car breaks down somewhere else, I don't have to worry about that. And uh, these are used... A, you need these to work on brakes, replacing uh, brake calipers or brake pads, take the caliber bolts out. A few other places they exist on a truck where you, or car where you need these. And ironically, the day after I ordered these off of Amazon, uh, my car, I stopped at the first stoplight, started to go, and I could hear my brake grinding. So I bought the tools to replace, or to work on my brakes, and then the, uh, the brakes go and get stuck on me and I need the tools. I was going to work on them this weekend, but it's been cold, so uh plan is to work on them next weekend. Alright, these are a pair of small little 6-inch, yes, yeah, about 6-inch vice grips. Uh, the 8-inch ones are nice, too. I use the 6-inch ones a lot, and I need to find and throw in my needle nose ones, too. I use those quite a bit. Some people don't like channel locks, and a lot of people really don't like the needle nose, but I use them a lot. Some needle nose pliers, uh, and I also need to throw in some like regular common the slip jaw plier things. I don't know what they're called, but regular pliers. I need to throw a pair of them in here too. Again, like I said, this is the bag I'm putting together as I'm cleaning and organizing. Uh, some sort of pair of channel locks. These are really nice Weehaw brand that my dad gave me. You don't need Weehaw or Nipex, or, but you need a good pair of channel locks. Open up pretty good. Great for grabbing a hold of all kinds of big things when you're working on a vehicle. All right, crescent wrench. This is a little six inch crescent wrench. Really handy because sometimes you need a wrench on each side and a socket won't fit. So uh, you can also throw in an eight inch one Six, eight inch, both great tools. All right, it's a breaker bar. It's, I think this was a little over two feet. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, like 26 inches or so. Uh, a lot of breaker bars are half inch drive. This one I bought because it's three eighths inch drive, which fits the three eighths inch sockets the same so I don't have to have an adapter or two different size sets of sockets this is just my regular ratchet it's a tectonic came with the uh, socket set but this is for big nuts you gotta put a lot of torque on um, also floating around in here are the two big sockets uh, these are the ones I use most commonly That's the 24 inch one that goes there should be another one, big one in here there it is for uh, lug nuts. No, 23 one goes there. This is the 24 it millimeter 1364. It's another common lug nut size and they fit on the breaker bar. Really good for that. I don't know if you can hear that clicking. That's the uh, sorry about that. If you can, it's the boiler heat system. All right, this is another ratchet, it's a flex head. This is actually the first ratchet I ever bought. I'm surprised I haven't lost it. Uh, but it's good. It's 
Sorry about that. I don't know why the video stopped, but it's... So this is a flex head ratchet, slightly longer handle than this one. So it gives me more leverage. And because it's flexible like that, I can get into some weird places. Now, this guy is also flexible on the end, but it's so long and unwieldy. So I think having all three of these together, or I know having all three of these together because I've worked on vehicles enough that these are the only ratchets I really ever need. Well, this isn't a ratchet, but socket turning tools I ever really need. Let's be careful I don't spill stuff off the workbench. Now, also in here, I have a variety of different extensions. These two are the same size, but you can stack st extensions on top of each other to make whatever length combination you need. And what extensions are for, if you don't know, is they go between your socket and your ratchet to give you a little bit more length so you can get into place a little bit better. And you should try to always get ones. Let's see. Yeah, the camera. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus really well. There we go. That's as good as I can get the camera to focus. But see the knurling on there? Well, that what that lets you do is once you get it broke loose, a lot of times you can use this like a screwdriver and get that socket out of there. All right, I need to throw on a headlamp, but I got two of these work lights. These are made by uh, Craftsman. And what's cool about these is they charge by micro USB and they also have a USB port out so I can charge a flashlight. Uh, I'm gonna throw all the charging cables in here too, but I can charge a flashlight from this. I can charge my headlamp that's gonna go in here. Uh, charge my cell phone in emergency if I don't have any other way to charge it. And this thing is crazy bright. Dim mode, and then it has a flashing mode and a little tripod stand. So you can put these behind your vehicle or something if you need to put a, do caution as well as use them as floodlights. I also use them a lot as, or on occasion as floodlights when camping or uh, sometimes when I'm shooting YouTube videos and it's not bright enough for the camera. All right. So then I also just picked up a set of these. Now these are called flare nut wrenches or line wrenches. Now see how this only grabs on two sides as a regular wrench. This one grabs on four sides. It's more like the box end of a wrench with a slot cut in it. So what this is for is getting around brake lines or other hydraulic lines and getting on that soft nut so you have more grip to turn that soft nut than you do with a uh, regular end wrench. I've actually uh, rounded out brake lines and brake bleeder valves with these. Luckily, I never had to do any maintenance after that on it. Let's see. And you really only need these three to work on standard. And I need to buy a metric one. So if I have to work on a foreign car or my girlfriend's car, I can. So they're 5 8 and 11 16 then half, 9 16 and then 3 8 and 7 16 And the reason you only need these three is because it's designed. So if you're using the small one on the small wrench, the other nut is the big one, or the small one on the medium sized wrench. Then if you step up to the next size, which I don't own a vehicle that uses that size brake lines or anything, you'd use the small one and the small, the small one on the medium wrench, the small end on the big wrench, or the big ends of both of them. And so between the three, you can do every size brake and hydraulic line on pretty much every vehicle uh, that's not metric. And then the last thing I throw in here, and I'll probably do update videos later as I go, is my new hammer. Now, this is a ball peen hammer, so it lets you, uh, our big heavy hammer is good to have in a tool bag to bash pins in, uh, bash in a bolt that's not lining up right. I do need to get a drift in here to, to help line up bolts that don't line up right. Uh, ball peen hammer, and it's not used too much automotively, but it's what the hammer has. 
And this one is what's called a dead blow. I doubt you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's full of uh, steel or zinc or heavy metal shot. So when the hammer hits, that shot slides forward and keeps the hammer from bouncing. So more of your energy goes into that. If you don't want to buy one of these hammers, you can usually, because they're relatively expensive, you usually find one of these hammers laying around. I actually found this one the other day uh, laying in the middle of the road. And just a two pound hammer, good for bashing things. And that's pretty much all the tools I have in here for now. Like I said, if I do any add any updates or anything, I'll let you know. And I, I did mention a few things I need to add and put in here as I clean. But thank you for watching and I hope you find it helpful. And thank you for joining me on the journey to use God's gifts to grow his kingdom, live a better life, and prepare for the future.